Ah, that's better. Now I can have all my YouTube stuff on the left hand side of the screen. And I can have my stream on the right. Very handy. Oh, I can just hang out here on my own until I get a few viewers. Just chillax. Crack a... Crack a Great Northern Open. <coughs> Greetings, everyone. Can you hear me all right through the microphone or um, not? Yep, yeah, cool. Sound crispy, uh, as in sounds good or sounds a bit craptacular. I found my old microphone uh, cable was very frayed, so yeah. Hopefully not. Anyway, hi everyone. Hi Gaz. Hey Wall Master Painting. Ah. Cool stuff. Bit of an Aussie accent, but okay. Yeah. Do you want me to talk like South African for the rest of the stream, mate? Talk like South Africans? Diplomatic immunity. Ah, all right. Let's uh, kick on with the show then. Do we want to talk about The Lion, Book 9, or Dice first? You tell me, chat. No, it can't be a Neil Blomkamp movie because um, Shalto Copley is not in it. He's not a member of the Outer Circle. Dice. Dice first. Okay. So, funny thing about the dice, I took a gamble a few months back, and I bought three sets of the Chaos Space Marine dice for 40k when they did the Chaos Space Marine release for 8th edition. I have three of those still, three boxes, and they're all unopened, still uh, wrapped in the shrink wrap and everything. And I think I paid 30 bucks or something for each pack something like that or 40 bucks and um those same dice now are selling for anywhere between 80 and 120 australian dollars on ebay so part of me is like huh i can sell them for a profit or maybe just maybe i might give those dice away to some people just to um, make a point of not selling shit for a profit. I haven't decided yet. So, the Legion dice. I think they did a pretty good job on the Legion dice. Most of them look good, although some of them, like the Night Wards ones, are a bit um, bland. It's just a, a single red icon, as opposed to... Uh, I don't know. The Ultramarines one with like the gold and stuff looks really nice. I guess I'm wanting too much in having like the dice painted a certain way, but they're fine, they're fine. The, the price is a little bit high. I mean, you can go to most dice manufacturers and get dice for cheaper than this custom made. It really depends what you want from it. I don't really know what to say about the dice. Hmm... Yeah, I got some dice made for myself. Uh, made for myself. <laughs> made for me. Um, by a guy in Australia, Dice of War. And it cost me about $2 a dice. And I just made a design, two designs in fact, and sent them to him and said, hey, can I get um, these made? Uh, so that worked out much cheaper, obviously. Yeah, the dice look nice. They're fine. Um, oh. Primark or the book? Tisk, tisk, tisk. 
Yeah, it is a bit of a disappointment. There's no custodian, mechanicum, or auxiliar dice. Um, they might still have some custodian dice on on G Dub's web store. Those luminous realm hordes dice set are just the worst. <laughs> Imagine rolling those things. Uh, they're a novelty dice if ever there was a set. Anyone want some Tau Aircast dice? I mean, if you find that too many women are attracted to you, Tau Aircast dice should put an end to that. It won't be a problem anymore. Just roll a few of those bad boys in the street. Maybe the Imperial Navy Taros dice set could work for Custodes and Sisters of Silence. Maybe. Hmm. Good morning and good evening, people. I can see your um comments too. I am not ignoring you. They are there. Yeah. All right. Let's go talk about... Uh, let's do the lion. We'll do the lion, then we'll talk book nine. I've got some less happy words to say about book nine. <laughs> Um, Lion, like any of the Primarchs, I think will be an absolute pleasure to build and paint because the Primarchs always are. They're always fun to work on, always very enjoyable. Uh, I've painted every Primarch release so far. It's been great. Once I get the Lion, which, yes, I ordered one. Um, I have a friend who sorts me out uh, with models from the UK so I don't have to pay the Australia tax. And I think between the Lion and the book combined, I ended up saving... I think it was around 80 Australian dollars in the end. But then once you add in like shipping and that, probably only about 50 to 60 Australian dollars I saved. So, well, let's zoom in a little bit. The lion sword and the bear head is how I'm going to build him. Um, I like the bear heads more, and I've done it on every Primark has had a bear head. Except for Alpharius, because they didn't provide a helmetless head. Plus, he has a really cool helmet. Um, yeah, it's interesting. The, the guys that are running up against the line here are Night Lords. So, every other Primark... Actually, no, I, I was about to make a lie. I was going to say, every other Primark... You can't tell what legion the uh, the models on their base come from, but that's a lie because there is one other Primarch whose legion on his base is specific, and that is Lehman Russ. Because on Lehman Russ's base, if we spin him around, you'll see there are some. Th there's an actual Thousand Suns helmet, which is obviously. Iconic for the Thousand Suns. And uh, it's hidden from view in this image. But there's a shoulder pad as well somewhere, which is a Thousand Suns shoulder pad, I'm pretty sure. But anyway, Thousand Suns helmet. Technically, that ties him in. He has to be fighting on Prospero. Plus, you know, the Egyptian ruins kind of give it away. Uh, but on the Lion, these are gonna always have to be night lords because even if you say ground away the shoulder pads on them to represent another legion maybe replace them that night lord symbol you may be able to get rid of yes you may be able to get rid of the eighth legion symbols but all these little bits of bone and human flesh that's that's hanging on the models um bits of skin yeah, you're stuck with that. Um, you can see there's quite a lot of bits of human flesh being worn as loincloths and such on the uh, Marines. This whole left shoulder pad, all the bones hanging from the... So, you 
couldn't have something like a lion versus his own dark angels, for instance. You couldn't do that. He has to fight, well, night wards, essentially. Which is... I don't know how I feel about it. I'm not saying it's a bad thing, just something I've noticed. Um, I think what happens a lot when I point out these things that I notice, people go, oh, you're so salty. I'm like, not being salty, I'm just making a point of something is different. This is the first Primarch where all the models on his base are specifically from a Legion. Like, you go back to, say, Angron. Angron was the first Primarch they released for uh, the Horus Heresy for 30k. Uh, if we look on Angron's base, or any of the Istvan Primarchs, you'll see that the Dead Marines, it's all decals. The helmets, the weaponry, all of that uh, could be any Legion any legion in particular doesn't have to be locked into one um, even some of the newer releases such as oh, Alpharius for instance let's see it's around here somewhere see he's killing a space wolf in the diorama but it's actually just the decal and the shoulder pad um, I chose to paint mine as a raven guard the dead marine on the base of my one. So, could be any legion you wanted, but not the lion. Has to be dark angels. Oh, sorry, fighting uh, night lords. Just an observation. Uh, yeah. So the bear head. I don't like the beard on the lion. I like a clean faced lion. Uh, the more of a sanguineous look. That's just personal preference. I know some people want a dawn to have a mustache. But I'm pretty sure that was a fan thing, giving Dawn a mustache. Hmm. It could maybe make it line versus word bearers. Maybe. Cut off all the shoulder pads or file away all the Night Ward's iconography and turn it into uh, word bearers decals. Yeah, you could definitely do something like that. You could maybe make all the bones and stuff hanging off them work better. Maybe give them word bearer helmets as a way to really help sell it. What do I think the next Horus Heresy book will be about? Like what factions are in it? I have actually tossed up making a full video for that, Tom. Where... Um, Basically making a video where I talk about what books logically should come after this. So let's think it through. We've done... We're, we're up to book nine. Oh, so I'll open that in a tab. And um, I'll, I'll open up the other books as well. So we've got a bit of reference to go off here. So Horus Heresy books, campaign books. All right. So, through the campaign, we've done the Istvan campaign, which was books 1, 2, and 3, obviously, for Istvan 3 and Istvan 5, the drop site massacre, all that kind of thing. Book 4 was a campaign book, and it was all about um, knights, knight households, Mechanicum, Solar Auxilia, and their various factional fights. Then we get book 5. Book 5, uh, Tempest, was the Imperial Militia. So, not Imperial Army, but basically reserve army national guard um dad's army that kind of thing tied in with the ultramarines and a very minor revisit of the word bearers uh you're only talking one book between the word bearers um appearing and this well for legions anyway it's about a year and a half between the release of book five and book two where the word bearers first um get their rules Then you've got um, book six, and book six is a full campaign book. Um, it's a, basically a rehash of book four's ideas, which is, hey, ignore the legions, this is other stuff going on. But they also added into it Shattered Legions, as well as essentially the beta rules for the White Scars, Blood Angels, and Dark Angels. So book six is that book that I feel really didn't need to exist. It's not that I hate it, but it's definitely the least inspiring book. Then, of course, book seven is the 
Inferno, The Burning of Prospero, which is all about Custode, Sisters, Space Wolves, Thousand Sons. Then you get to Book 8, and you get Demons of the Ruined Storm, you get White Scars, and you get Blood Angels, and for some reason you get a full revisit of the Custodes that were just in the last book, which fills a heap of the book up. I feel that Dark Angels shouldn't have been Book 9, they should have been in Book 8, as was the original plan, and Custodes shouldn't have been in that book at all, but instead given a red book. For those who don't understand what the red books are, um, these are red books. They are rule books specific to a faction. So that's what they should have done with them. But instead, the Dark Angels have been pushed back another book, and so that gives us Book 9, which is going to be the Thramus Crusade. So logically... The books that should come next should be what? Uh, well, you'd have to have the Shadow Crusade, so the a revisit of the World Eaters and the Word Bearers running around Ultramar doing all their uh, fun stuff, which would be a great time to include characters like Argel Tal, um, Delvaris of the World Eaters. You could add characters like that, maybe even Latara Saren. She's a fan favourite. Um... I'm sure they could come up with rules to her and a way to work her into the game as either Militia or Solar Auxilio or even Imperial Army. That would be a great point for Imperial Army to put up. Um, so that's a thing. There should probably be a book to cover the Alaxis Nebula. So actually get that revisit of the Elf Legion rules that they didn't put into book 8. Do the Alaxis Nebula where the Elf Legion fights the space wolves and at the same time they could have the death guard revisited because you'll have the death guard versus the white scars at the same time over prospero and of course the white scars fight that multi-year long behind enemy lines hit and run campaign so essentially you could cover that in that book you could also include some of the shadow legion elements in there or even korax's sort of revitalized raven guard with his um with his raptors and they could actually do something like make Raptors models, because Raven Guard are a much less played Legion. So that's two books right there, Shadow Crusade and the um, the Crusade of Dark Compliance or something, you could call that. Uh, you definitely have to have a book on Beta Gammon, which is the big uh, engagement between Imperium and Horus on his way to Terra. Essentially the last stopgap choke point uh, the Dunkirk, as it were, before Horus gets to um, Terra. So that would be a book. Um, logically, you would also have to have at least two books on the Martian Civil War, which would have to focus on night households for loyalist traders, dark mechanicum, regular mechanicum, crazy kinds of archaeotech, um, all that kind of stuff should definitely be in there, and then probably two to three books on the Siege of Terror itself. And that's probably the minimum amount of books you'd have to have in the series to really visit everything. So I hope that kind of answers the question. All right, uh, Joseph asks, do they make rules for Luther, and if not, why? Uh, I did not see Luther's rules listed. They did have a glossary page listed up in a previous... Um, previous post they did on Warhammer Community, and Luther was not listed in the special characters. Causewain was, beloved Causewain, but not Luther. Um, and I'll tell you why. Because the Forge World staff don't care. Um, and I don't mean that to be a dick. I mean that they like to add a lot of their own characters or flesh out lesser known characters before they go after the big guys. Like, we still don't have Lucius, for instance. They said they didn't even think of Lucius when asked. Um... For jeez, oh many different factions like Salamanders didn't get their first captain. Neither did Iron Hands. Iron Hands eventually they got um. Oh, what's his face? I forget now. Um, the guy who basically was leading all the Shattered Legions, Shadowrite Medicine. They they leave a lot of characters on the fall. Um, there's a guy of the White Scars gets left on the cutting room floor. They kind of save those characters for later on, I think. Because to them, I don't think it's about trying to get the the books out quickly and efficiently. I think it's just they, they treat it as, this is just something we're doing 
and releasing in our own time, our own way. And if you want it, uh, whatever, fine. Um, we'll release it when we're ready to release it. These black books, we don't really care about it. <laughs> so they, they instead of pumping out the books rapidly, they drag out the releases over quite a span of years. And I think Luther will be saved for a revisit of the Dark Angels rules much later on uh, in several years' time. Because it's the only thing that seems reasonable in these circumstances. Well, Clement, Dark Mech was supposed to be planned for the next book. That was supposed to be in the last book. They've been talking about Dark Mech came from for a long time. If I may take a guess, I would say that Dark Mechanicum has been constantly pushed back or bumped back for the same reasons that, say, Custodes were, which is, it's either two options. First, they just can't get the sculpts out or they can't get the rules working, in which case it's just a practicality thing, like, okay, there's no point bringing out the rules in the book in that first because it's going to take forever to actually get these units out and people are going to be shitty, so let's just not do it we'll wait for another book down the track. Or, uh, conspiracy theory, get your tinfoil hat on. Like with Custodes, they're going to do a plastic release instead of a resin one. And so, they want to make plastic Mechanicum to introduce the Dark Mechanicum faction to 40k. Now, I'm not saying it would be a huge faction. It'd probably be like Mechanicum in 40k, where it's like five units, <laughs> you know, with two bills in each box to make ten units. And that's probably what it'll be um, if you've got your tinfoil hat on. And so Dark Mechanicum, they're just holding off at Forge World until Games Workshop actually makes the plastic kits. Could be an option. Again, I don't know that it is. I'm just guessing based on what they did previously. Uh, let's see. Sorry, I've just got to scroll up through the chat. Tommy Hawk says, Hey, Macro, I'm stunning a Goyalus X Sons of Horus Lunar Wolves force. That's yeah, good to hear. They're a lovely little faction, the Lunar Wolves. Any tips? Um, yeah, so you won't have access to a lot of those units like Justerian and such because they're first company sort of diehard elites, so are the Reavers. Um... If you look at a lot of the Book 1 rules for the Sons of Horus and try and stick more towards assault infantry, uh, close-range firefights, that kind of thing, you'll probably be closer to the Lunar Wolves' uh, rules. They said no Luther because he took no active part in the heresy. Well, neither did Ferris Manus, but we got his rules, didn't we? <laughs> oh, F in the chat for Ferris. Um... Let's see. The whole Carab Caliban debacle was after the Siege of Terror. Well, it's happening... The whole Caliban debacle, according to the latest round of novels, is happening during the heresy. I find it interesting that they still like to use the uh, unreliable narrator line when it comes to the Horus Heresy novels, even though they're being told from the first-person perspective and multiple characters in the books are witnessing the same event from different angles and relating the same story back to you. I don't know how that can be the unreliable narrator. So I see the novels as being the quote-unquote more uh, uh, more canon, more official telling of the story for that reason. Because it can't be a case of, oh, unreliable narrator when there's three different people in the same book who are all telling the same event. It makes no sense how it can be unreliable narrator. Do you think we will see a Causeway model in the future? A pretty good. Yes, I do think we will. Because Causeway is a badass uh, as cool as some of the other Dark Angels characters are like Master of the Dreadwing and stuff come on it's Causewayne he's the Sigismund of the Dark Angels anyone think it's ironic that the Warhammer community today how to build your Age of Darkness force yesterday but have continued to ignore the community asking for a box for going on three years of course it's ironic um, they're not going to bring out a new box just for us um unfortunately it's one of those things where they want to show us affection and get us to buy the book buy the miniatures 
when they do a new release because they don't want to be left with all these books on the shelf. A lot of people are saying to me they think it's a bit of a situation where they've sort of pushed the pricing point to the absolute extreme of what they can get away with because even the difference this time out between the book in Australia and the book in England is not that great. Um, the book has over 100 pages less than book seven and yet costs more than book seven. Um, I'll double check if it does currently on the web store. Uh, 193 for Crusade, yep. Uh, 190 for book seven. So I'll open up book seven, we'll confirm the page count. 312 pages for book seven and book nine. 208 pages. So 104 less pages three dollars more to buy book nine than to buy book seven and this is in uh hardback <laughs> you tell me um this is the first time i've seen a black book release and it's not instantly sold out all over the web store normally it's um they do the pre-orders and it's just sold out straight away like we know that the dark angels dice are Temporarily out of stock, there you go. But the book itself and even the lion are not. So I think they might have hit the absolute extreme of what people are willing to put up with uh, financially. Because yikes. Uh, yikes to that. Ugh. Um, let's see. More of the chat. I like seeing all those Fs for Ferris Manus. Two of two Titan Legions, uh, Bleed Dry and Cast Aside. Scurrier takes control of Xana 2, Dark Mechanic and Form started, and then the Death of Mizzens. So much cool story to be told, don't fuck up. Yeah, well, we shall see. What would you want to see on Made to Order next? I kind of want to see the old school Death Guard model so I don't have to deal with all of the tentacles. <laughs> Um, controversially, I want to see the Teleran Desert Rats. Um, Forge World was starting to actually make the Teleran army, and then I think it just got a bit too politically correct or something to be doing a bunch of Arabic-styled guys, we'll say. And so they got rid of... They had, like, all these cool upgrade kits for Lehman Russes for, like, Desert Warfare, and they actually had Teleran Tank Commanders, and they had Teleran Heavy Weapons Teams... And then they just stopped doing it. That would have been cool to see in Made to Order. Do I think the Games Workshop will release some more plastic kits for the Horus Heresy? Or am I just a fool for thinking that Games Workshop will do something sensible? Good question, Jake. Um, yeah, I think they will release more plastic kits. The question is when and for what? And why? Um, I I can't see them releasing anything that's going to compete with 40k. So if we look at what they're doing with Warhammer Fantasy, apparently the new version of Warhammer Fantasy, the old world, is going to be in, I think, 15mm scale, is the rumour I'm hearing. Um, which is something people probably remember. I said several live streams back, they'll do something like that because obviously Age of Sigma can't have a competitor in the same company they want people to be buying all of their products but if they have two products in the same scale that create um with two different gameplay types two different settings it might draw away people from one setting so and you couldn't have a lot of age of sigma models are so dynamic you couldn't rank them up like you could for an old school warhammer fantasy army so they're going to a different scale the horus heresy creates a problem because it is the scale that 40k is in and so if they release a cool box set for cheap for 30k then potentially um if they don't go for my rogue trader redo idea potentially they bring out a competitor to 40k 9th edition now i still think 40k will do just fine because the people who are on that train they're on that train the only reason horus heresy started to get huge in 7th edition from 40k people leaving 40k was because 40k at the end of 7th was in such a terrible state that um, 
the Horus Heresy represented sort of a bright beacon of hope. And as soon as 8th edition came out, all those people that jumped ship jumped straight back the other way. So, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure what it would take for them to release the plastic kits. I think they will. I think they will. But I wouldn't put a time frame on it. Thoughts on Chaos Solar Auxilia themed around the end of the heresy? Um, why not? Both sides had Solar Auxilia, and there would have been Solar Auxilia that fought for Horus. The question is, how evil do you want to make those Solar Auxilia? Um, it's pretty hard to make Ogrens much more... Uh, Charonite Ogrens much scarier than they are. Fires of Seraxis is gone forever. For much as being lost, never to be relearned. Fires of Seraxis, does... I'm not sure how many people in the chat remember that. Fires of Seraxis was meant to be a Forge World book that was coming in 7th edition, but then 8th edition got sprung on Forge World in like 5 minutes because that's how quickly 8th edition was designed in. Uh, that may sound like a joke, but it really was designed very quickly, 8th edition. It was not one of these... We've been planning it and playtesting it for three years type things. No, no, no. It was, we're just going to port over the Age of Sigma rules and um, dump it onto the community. And we need... I'll be blunt. The reason they did it was because 40k was in a terrible place at the end of 7th edition. A fucking terrible place. Um, so much so that the only way for them to fix it was to quickly release a new edition and get that hype train going. And the new edition was less about releasing a better game as it was releasing Primaris Marines and getting people on that bandwagon. So, Fires of Seraxis being a 7th edition themed Forge World book then got pushed and pushed and pushed and pushed and it's just gone now. Um, it's a real shame because Fires of Seraxis is going to bring a lot of Mechanicum stuff. I believe from the 30k setting into 40k, so give you like your Castellax, your Domital, all that sort of thing, 40k rules to help flesh out the 40k Mechanicum. And it just didn't happen. <laughs> Gordon Nathan says, starting out a heavy infantry Alpha Legion list, any tips or recommendations? Or sorry, an infantry heavy, not heavy infantry. Um, well, if you go look at Kieran Douglas's work, um, I think he's Kiz Dugs on Instagram. He runs a lot of infantry heavy um, Alpha Legion. Uses a lot of Seekers, a lot of Plasma, um, has a lot of outflanking Tartarus Terminators or Tartarus Terminators using Infiltrate, depending on what uh, mutable tactics he chooses. Runs them with a lot of Combi Plasma, Plasma Blast Guns. Uh, he also uses a lot of Dread Cores, and that seems to be really effective. And every game I play with him, he makes me work for it something fierce. Um, so can't recommend it more highly. Um, and yeah, I think that's Kiz Dugs on Instagram. Mac, can we get a getting started video for Shattered Legions soon, please? Okay, do people want me to talk about Shattered Legions right now in the chat? I'll give you about mm, oh, a minute to type in the chat if you want to talk about uh, Shattered Legions, because I can talk about them right now. His instant name is Raptor Imperialis. There you go. Sorry, Kiz Dugs is, inst is Raptor Imperialis on Instagram. My apologies. He will tell you a lot about Alpha Legion if you turn to him. Yeah, okay. People clearly want to talk about Shattered Legions. So Shattered Legions, I will go away from the pre-orders and Royals and Traitors. What's the best way to do this? Shattered Legions is an interesting one because essentially you pick a parent legion who's going to be leading the force. And as long as the HQ who's your compulsory for that legion is in play, then what's going to happen is all your guys are going to work together as per pretty much being one army. 
where the problem starts is if you lose your HQ. When you lose your HQ, all your different units that are made up of all the different factions you've put into that force start treating each other as distrusted allies, which is a very weird dynamic. Um, I played the Sagia Mazan Rite of War, which runs a bit differently to the standard one when I played Shattered Legions. But Shattered Legions essentially get rid of all the drawbacks of your Legion in order to make it work as a force because they recognise that some forces would be pretty much impossible. So, for instance, if you were playing um, Raven Guard and Iron Hands together, which is pretty thematic, you know, um, they're both survivors of Isfarm, they both work together a lot in the uh, Shattered Legion's forces, your Raven Guard don't have to adhere to the you must have more troops than tanks in your army rule anymore. So that means you have a bunch of heavy armor thanks to your Iron Hands component. And you can also have a bunch of uh, Raven Guard infantry or very few Raven Guard infantry. It's totally up to you how you do it. What also gets funky is your Right of War. The Right of War affects everyone in the list, but everyone in the list in the Shattered Legions keeps their initial parent legion rules, which means you get some really funky combinations. So, for instance, you can have some broken shit, like take an Imperial Fist Praetor or Delegatus, make him the uh, commander of the force, the primary HQ, the warlord. You then take the Stone Gauntlet Rite of War, which is models with boarding shields, storm shields, that kind of thing, within um, one inch of another model with... Oh, sorry, within one inch of two other models with a boarding shield, they go up to Toughness 5. So then you have Invictus Suzerain of the Ultramarines, which is, for those who don't know, that's these assholes. These assholes have power axes that strike at initiative and on sixes to hit automatically wound. And they're AP2. And they're in Artifsa armor, so they all have two plus saves. And they have boarding shields, and they have defensive grenades because they've got boarding shields and all these other bonuses. So you get these guys, and then these ultramarine units get the stone gauntlet rules, so then they become toughness 5. Good luck killing these guys with apothecaries when they're toughness 5 with 2 plus saves, with 5 plus involves with defensive grenades, with AP2 and initiative. You get these crazy combinations. Um, another crazy combination you might see is Death Guard. Uh, why Death Guard? Well... The Death Guard have a very interesting Rite of War, um, and that Rite of War is the uh, Reaping. So in the Reaping Rite of War, Legion heavy supports become compulsory troops choices, well, more or less speaking. Um, you must take them. You don't have the ability to run anymore, that kind of thing. But you can do things like now take Raven Guard in the Force, who will get Infiltrate moves, or Alpha Legion in the Force, and then those Raven Guard and the Elf Legion will also get the ability to take rad grenades on their squad sergeants because of the rules. So you can see why I haven't really done uh, Shadow Legions yet as a getting started in Horus Heresy video, because the Shadow Legions are all over the shop. Sometimes they are really, really fair and balanced. Um, you might be running like Shadrach Medusin with just a a balanced mix of Salamanders, Raven Guard, and Iron Hands. But then other times you get, you know, Stone Gauntlet Ultramarines. So what do you want to go up against, you know? It's a, a, it's a really hard one to talk about because there are so many different takes on it. When I talk about a Legion normally, when I do a Getting Started Horus Heresy Legion video, it's usually around about the 20 minute mark, we'll say. And I spend 20 minutes talking about a Legion, their rules, how they work, the sort of stuff you should buy for it. When you get to Shattered Legions, um, I'll just do some quick maths here because I'll tell you the maximum number of possible combinations. So you have 18 Legions. So you get 18 by 17 by 16 because you're removing one each time. That means there are 4,896 possible combinations of Shattered Legion forces. And then each one of those combinations is going to have an option of two to three different rights of war based on legion and then also half a dozen i think in fact we're up to nine generic rights of war 
So you're talking somewhere in the 16,000, if not more, bracket of possible combinations of Shadow Legion. So a little bit hard to do a full getting started video on, which is why I've avoided the topic like the plague until today. Alright, so going back a few steps um, to some of the earlier comments in the chat. 190 bucks for a book that is like a college textbook. Yeah, but with a lot less effort put into it. What are people doing about Teleron like I was? Yeah, yeah, see. People cared about Teleron. Zor Auxilia, Elf Legion Agents, boom, they even mentioned Praetorian of Dawn. I do that with anyone. Is there a way to find or see sculpts, prototypes, and Forge World Games Workshop that were denied production for 30k slash 40k? It would be fun to see the creative madness the sculptor can come up with. Most sculpts that are never put in production end up on the cutting room floor and you never see them. Occasionally you might see a special in White Dwarf and you get to see some, or you'll get artists like Edgar Skoromowski. If you follow him on Facebook, he occasionally makes his own sculpts or has some old sculpts left over um, from his time at Forge World that they never put into production that were just his personal ones. And he kept them um, for himself and makes his own models and he doesn't sell them or anything it's just for him for his own personal use and that's pretty cool Raxus, hey mac i finally managed to catch the stream I'm getting more and more into 30k wonder what you would recommend from your older video about getting started blood angels same as always tactical marines i, I say it for everyone because you gotta walk before you run you don't just pick a legion and then go, okay, what's the dick kicker list I can do? No, no, no. Couple of tactical squads, a HQ, maybe um, some elite units, a Contempt of Dreadnought, of course, and then build the faction up from there. You can go to all the cool toys like, oh, I want to have a whole bunch of Angels Tears or Dawnbreaker Cohort. No worries, go for it. Anything beyond a couple of tactical squads, a Contempt of Dreadnought, a HQ, is stepping away from the getting started aspect and going into the expanding my force, making it much bigger and stronger. And when you get to that point, my big point that I always bring up to people is Horus Heresy is a game that is really dependent on objectives and capturing them. It's a game where only troops units and units which have certain special rules are able to do. So my rule of thumb is to always add an extra scoring unit for every 500 points. So by the time you get to a 3,000 point game, you should at least have six scoring units in some capacity. Now this might be Legion Terminators. They can score, so can Legion Veteran Tactical uh, Tactical Squads. Tactical Support Squads can score. So there's a lot of options out there of things that can score. Um, you can even get lucky with your Warlord traits and end up with a Warlord trait that gives your HQ scoring. But because that one is something you can't depend on, it's not one I would try and guarantee. So there are things you've got to keep in mind when you build a list. Raven Guard, Salamanders, Iron Hands. Well, Raven Guard, Salamanders, Iron Hands can go any number of ways. You could have um, Raven Guard Decapitation Strike led by Iron Hands tanks, uh, which would be weird. Although the idea of fire drakes getting preferred enemy against independent characters with all those thunder hammers is pretty hilarious. Um, well, the Salamanders have a right of war, which gives all their vehicles a 5 plus invulnerable save against plasma, melter, um, I think las cannons. Uh, so take the Salamanders' right of war and then load up on Iron Hands tanks with Blessed Auto Simulacra. So the Iron Hands tanks all have 5 plus invulnerable saves and uh, it will not die because hard to kill tanks is funny. Starburst asks, are those dice available for a limited time only? In the past, whenever Forge World brings out things like the dice or Games Workshop brings them out, they're usually limited time only. We won't know, but... Uh, hmm. If I may diverge for a moment... Uh, to this book. Book 9. I'm going to get a little bit salty here. So, you know, you've got your warning now. Leave, um, viewers leave if you're not ready for a little salt. 
Book 9 is seeing the release of certain special rules for different units. Um, well, not even special rules, just rules, I should say. Such as the Aurochs. Now, for those who don't remember, the Aurochs is the Solar Auxilia slash Imperial Militia equivalent of a Rhino. Um, I will try and find one. No, so I'll go for the Carnadon. Because it's the same hull but it's got side sponsons and a predator turret and the back of the tank also has a uh, the ramp is removed and replaced with a sort of engine bay the greatest weak spot ever in a vehicle <laughs> anyway this is essentially the Aurox's hull and the Carnadon is in production, but the Aurochs itself is no longer in production, and yet the rules are coming out in Book 9. So Book 9 took so long to get produced that the Aurochs, a tank that was previewed in March of last year, I think it was, it took so long to get from Book 8 to Book 9 that the Aurochs is actually removed from production before... It even got its rules officially released in a book. Just let that sink in for a moment. There are units in Book 9, which came out after Book 8, and have already gone out of production before Book 9 has hit the shelves. You can't make this shit up. Well, that's an impressive feat, I think. And also, interesting thing. See this artwork in here? of uh, Comrade Kurz and the uh, Night Wards there fighting. Does that not look like something? Let's see if I can blow it up a little bit. In fact, I can I can do this stuff. Does that not look like something straight out of a 40k codex? That does not look like a 30k books artwork. And I'll, I'll try and make the point by looking at some of the previous um, black books. This is where I'll make a total wire of myself too. Open up in a couple different tabs and see if there's any pictures from inside. There you go. There is the artwork in book one. That is an actual physical model of a contempted dreadnought, a physical land raider, physical space marines put there and they've added in Photoshop effects around the actual models painted up they haven't just drawn it, they actually built these things and posed them or took pictures of them and photoshopped them into a collage. Versus in this new book where it looks like something hand-drawn straight out of a codex. I'm not saying that makes the book worse, but it's not making it better. It's like that quality's gone. It's not the, the realism anymore of the old Forge World Black books. Instead, it's got that it's got that 40k codex feel. Just a massive shame. Um, stuff like this Leviathan Dreadnought, yeah, that's that's all good and well. But yeah, what's going on here? It's it's just so bizarre. So many things one can say about Book Nine's release that is just so disappointing. Anyway. Just reading through the chat. Exodite Review says, They clearly don't design the codexes with the system in mind, i.e. like all armies units are based on a certain baseline and then adjusted. No, they don't use a datum point. They don't go, alright, all units start out with, say, a marine stat line. And for every point we deduct off the marine stat line, we reduce the points cost of the unit or some such. They don't do that. They just seem to sort of do what they feel. Um... If anything, I'd say when they do their playtesting, which is a laughable term, they they do it under ideal circumstances, such as the armies you see in a White Dwarf Battle Report. So they're not showing you the sort of armies you'll see in any kind of competitive meta or in your local gaming club if there's just a dick player, where they just load up on what's really good. Instead, when they do their battle reports and when they do their playtesting, I think what they do is they just go for the the fair and balanced quote unquote where they just sort of take one of everything they don't play a list and go like you know let's take 
I don't know, three Vindicators. I don't know what's good in 40k at the moment. Um, let's just take three Vindicators and two tactical squads, and that's like a 500-point army or some crap. They're not doing that. And so when someone does that, it inevitably ends up broken because they never planned for someone doing that, even though it's more than truly allowed. And that's probably where they go wrong with a lot of their, their books over the years. Tripwire says, I'm running a very Volkite-heavy army, Wordbearers, Zone Mortalis Forces, Volkite Calibers, and Volkite Culverins. Could you give general tips on how to play it? So, with Volkite Culverins, you need to you need to look for a fire lane. So, for those who don't know, a fire lane is a military term. Essentially, it's somewhere where when the enemy's on it, it's really easy to shoot them. It's probably the easiest way to describe it. So, such as a road. If you have a machine gun on a road, and it's got forests on each side of the road, it's very hard to shoot people or see them when they're in the forest. But when they're crossing that road, they are very exposed. Which is why the military has all sorts of tactics for crossing roads. So with uh, Culverins, because they're a heavy weapon, you want to try and get on uh, a point on the table, or bring them on in an area where you can look straight up the table, get the longest view sight possible. So anything that crosses through your line of fire, you can just hose them down. Because the beauty of it is, um, it's like paintball tactics. If people have played a lot of paintball, essentially when you play paintball you uh, and you're playing competition, you set up at two opposite sides of the field with your team and you try and create an X shape. So the person in each corner on your team shoots diagonally across the firing line of the other. So you create two lines that if the other team crosses through it, they will get hit by crossing either of those lines. And they can't outflank you because the lines overlap. Well, it's the same sort of thing here, where you're creating that fire lane. You've got culverins aiming up, but the enemy doesn't want to cross that fire line. So you're preventing them from getting to the other parts of the board. That's how you play heavy weapons, especially Volkite culverins in Zone Mortalis. And it's also a way you can play them in 40k. The only difference in 40k is because there's no walls to protect your units in all directions, the enemy gets to shoot back. For a getting started video, you could approach it as Loyalist at Isfahan 3, as a separate video for two Loyalists at Isfahan 5, more restricted than having to cater every possible combination. Oh, uh, yes, but uh, it's still a lot of combinations. So, in each case, well, for Isfahan 3, for Shadow Legions, we'd be looking at... 24 possible combinations of Legion, plus another dozen versions of that based on Rite of War. For Istvan 5, with just Raven Guard, Iron Hand, Salamanders, you'd be looking at 6 combinations plus Rites of War, which is a lot more approachable, but then it will change dramatically based on what characters you take, such as Shadrach Medusin, who actually, even though he's an Iron Hand's HQ, can be taken as the ward and allows you to use either the Raven Guard, Salamanders, or Iron Hands Rites of War. Huge deal. <clears throat> Luke Norris asks, are we going to get Fulman Turrets Terminator, that's the Ultramarines Specialist Terminator unit, or Iron Havocs, which are the Iron Warrior Specialist Heavy Support unit? Um, no and no. With Volmentaris Terminators, I'm actually a big fan of going to one of the many Kickstarters that are currently out there and getting some of the uh, Saturnine Terminators. They probably look really good as Volmentaris Terminators. Failing that, just go get yourself some um, Iron Warrior um, Tyrant Terminators and change their heads and you'll be pretty damn close. Misanthrope Man says, Don't you think it's rather humorous that Melters had always been highly destructive weapons, hampered by a low number of shots and range, yet Primaris pull all rounded ones out of their ass? That's not a problem for me. My problem with the Primaris Melters is the fact that there is a specialist melter unit which has the best melters in the universe, and they're the Fire Dragons. But the Fire Dragon Melters are worse than the Primaris Melters, because Primaris are just better at everything, including the unit that was designed by a race thousands of years ago to be the best at that thing.
Macker, are you going to do a getting started on Mournful, Eldar, Necrons, Orcs, and so on in the future? Why, yes, I am. Uh, in fact, I've been talking through the Orc list um, with Hollis at the moment, and just seeing some of the stuff going on in the background is very interesting. Um, I also am going to get Tom from the Mournful uh, team who wrote most of the rules, him and his guys. He will be coming on the show in the next few weeks. Uh, we're just trying to nail down our time because he's very busy. And he will actually go through the rules with me and talk through some of that stuff. Hey, Maka, how long does it take Forgeord to release paperback versions of the Horus Heresy books? I was going to buy book nine for the Night Lords content, but saw the price. Uh, that's a good question. Eight to 12 months, I think, is the average, but it's been all over the shop. Raxus says, ever thought about doing a video of you playing 30k? It'll be cool to see. Ages back, Cat and I did some quick bits of video that we put on the Facebook page playing one night before an event for shits and giggles. I would love to do proper video battle reports, but I don't really make a lot of money from the hobby. Um, I do have Patreon for this channel, and of course I get some ad revenue, but at the size of the channel and the size of the Patreon subscriber base, because I charge very little for Patreon support, like a dollar is the minimum buy-in, I don't make a huge amount of money, nor should I, because I'm not putting enough effort in to deserve a huge amount of money. But the money I do make, I am using to do things like buy a new monitor, which I did today, which is like 400 bucks, in order to have this live stream tonight more efficiently set up, because I've got two monitors now and I can read the chat in one, I'm not trying to juggle an iPad and talk at the same time, and it takes a long time for me to get stuff together. And so wanting to buy a decent video camera so I can record good quality footage and make good quality battle reports is definitely something that is going to take time to do and on top of that I've also got the fact that right now I'm in the endless lockdown of the state of Victoria which means I just can't get out and get games but yeah I'd love to do battle reports to be playing 30k I'd love to film whole events of 30k if it was possible I have crap loads of pictures from events that I just haven't put on their Facebook page um, I've got all these SD cards just loaded up with images of the different tables and stuff so people can see the terrain we're playing on, just some of the beautiful armies that are there. It'd be great to show it all. I just don't get around to it. Hey, Maka, do you think Indominus Terminator armor should get its own rules like the Cataphract in Tartarus did? If so, what should they get? The default ability uh, to deep strike. Hmm. No. Um... Indominus is the compromised Terminator armor. It's not as advanced as Tartarus. It's not as heavily armored as Catastracti. It's it's the vanilla Terminator armor, and that's why it gets no special ability. And I'm totally fine with that. Hey, what are the best vehicles for Solar Auxilia? Kind of interested in painting me some Heresy Era dudes. Okay, I have Solar Auxilia. I play Solar Augs, so let's do this. It's armies of the Imperium for Solar Auxilia, by the way. Apparently there's none working for Horus, even though they can be played by other traitors. Um, so the Macarius, uh, sorry, the Melgador chassis is no longer as good as it used to be because the latest FAQ, the experimental rules, they turned the Melgador variants from a super heavy into a heavy tank. And the problem with that is they're like armor 13 front and there's like a... 12, 11, I'm going to say, for side and rear. I do forget sometimes. Which means they're pretty brittle, uh, even with a lot of hull points. And they can't just go forward and fire everything the way they used to. What I do think are still good vehicles, though, are the Infernus, definitely, especially if you upgrade it to the Chem Munition. Uh, the Melkador Infernus is just... It's like the Sikranarchus. It's not as very expensive for the amount of pain it can deliver and it also is a huge fire magnet because of that um, when it comes to the artillery yeah they've got medusas they've got basilisks they're always going to be good because they're huge pie plates that wipe out squads of marines but you're paying a lot of points for it then you've got uh, the dracosan the dracosan's great where a lot of people go wrong, though, is they take all the Dracosans in their list with Demolisher Cannons, and they take, like, six of them, and they spend a crap load of points on it. For me, I am taking two Dracosans with Demolisher Cannons and one with a 20 to Laz Cannon, 
And because I've got the two demolisher cams on the Drakasans, I'm not going for the artillery tank battery. Instead, what I've gone for is uh, the Lehman Russ incinerator, which is this bad boy down here. So the incinerator is, it's a five shot twin linked strength seven AP five Volkite. It's not very good, but I really like the look of the turret. I love Volkite weapons, so I went for it. A smart person would just take a bunch of regular Lehman Russes with battle cannons or maybe even the auto cannons. The auto cannon variant's really good. Uh, and take those as fast attack options. Uh, the Carnadon is really good. Where people go wrong with the Carnadon, and also going back to the Drakasan, they spend too many points trying to upgrade it. Don't do that. Take the Carnadon with um, auto cannons. I would just, yeah, just load up with auto cannons or multi lasers, and that's it. Don't go spending a heap of points on it. Maybe you could make one a commander. It's probably not worth it though in most games. Uh, if you're playing Zone Mortalis with Solar, take Charonite Ogrens, take Flamers, Valtaris, and you'll do just fine. Um, let's see. Yeah, avoid the regular Melkadors. I also run a Veldor. Um, a Veldor with the HQ option. Um, if I don't want to run the Veldor for points reasons, then I've got a Lemon Rust Vanquisher. I can put the HQ into because the HQ is Blessed Skill 4 and has Tank Hunter, which is a big deal. It also gives boosted leadership to units within 12 inches of the tank, I believe. So where you put him is very important. You also have access to, obviously, the Storm Hammer, um, which is that massive Bane Blade variant with all the guns in the world. Um, but you're probably better served by maybe a Storm Lord Super Heavy. Uh, I think that's the, the one with the... Um, miniguns. I'll, I'll just go look them up. I can't remember everything off the top of my head, guys. Uh, <laughs> Astro Militarum. Scroll right down, because it'll be down the bottom in the out of stock. Okay. Um, Storm Sword's really good, because it's like a Typhon. You get to you get a Strength 10, AP 1, 7-inch Blast ignores cover template. <laughs> which is just bullshit good. Um, the Storm Lord, as I said, uh, it's got heavy bolters, not um, heavy stubbers in a Solar Rogues list, which is strong. And you can put four squads of like 10 Valataris in it, which is a pretty nasty combination. Uh, you also have the regular Bane Blade. I'm actually a big fan of the regular Bane Blade, um, and it's a shame you don't see it used more. Have they even got a picture of a regular Bane Blade? Okay, no, apparently they don't. Um, the closest they come is the Hellhammer. Well, anyway, a regular Bane Blade is perfectly fine. Um, the other option you have, I don't know if they still sell it on Forge World. I'll just quickly double check. It'll be in 40k. Macarius Vanquisher. Yeah, you can take Macarius. Macarius Vanquisher and that are pretty good. Won't lie. Um, very pricey, though. I wouldn't suggest taking the Minotaur. You will not get your points or money worth. Um, the Stormblade. Macarius Vulcan, Macarius Heavy Tank are both good options, but the Stormblade is really good. Um, so, yeah, probably Stormblade... Storm Sword and Storm Lord. I'll give the thumbs up to for Soul Auxiliar Tanks, as well as the Malkador Infernus. Obviously, the Storm Hammer, the Bane Blade. Um, ignore the Malkador variants completely, except for the Veldor and the Infernus. Uh, and Stock Lehman Rust Battle Tank Squadron is perfectly good. The Carnadons are good, but yeah, they're pretty damn pricey. 160 Australian dollars for a Predator, essentially. Ooh, don't know about that. So talking about getting started, is there a different way to start an army depending if you want to be loyal or trader? For example, if you want to make Winter Wounds or Sons of Horus. Uh, not particularly. Um, the biggest difference is the specialist units that are unlocked down the line. So certain units like uh, Red Butchers for the World Eaters, uh, Noise Marines for the 
um, Empress Children, they are traitor only specific units. There are also certain special characters, and of course, your rights of war can vary. And the World Eaters in particular actually have two variants of the World Eater Legion rules. There is a pre Istvan, just you're angry because you're World Eaters, and there's a post Istvan, you're extra angry because now you're on your way to worshipping corn um, set of rules. Essentially, one I think is you gain furious charge or something if you fail a leadership check or a pinning check whereas in the you're starting to head towards corn list you just have rage by default which is really good are all the old imperial armor books out of production now yes sadly they are Maka, I want to do a Dark Angels 30k army, so I want to buy the book, but since it does seem BS for the price and page count, should I still get it? Um, that is entirely up to your definition of worth. Um, I can't make that call for you. Me, I'm getting it because I've got them all, and I was able to get it for cheaper. I can't say substantially cheaper this time, but cheaper because I got it directly from the UK. As people would know, I'm not a huge fan uh, of buying from Forge or directly anymore because I'm still protesting in my own little way um, their handling of the last chance to buy and the regional price rises that they did for no good reason. In law, Iron Hands apparently have a lot of cataphracty armor left over. Too bad in 40k you still can't use as many as it implies. Well, if you want to talk about war that doesn't sync up with what you see on the tabletop, the greatest example of that is the 40k Chaos Space Marines who have no land raiders. Well, they've got one. They've got a God Hammer pattern land raider, so two last cannons on each side. When the traders lost the Siege of Terror and they fled to the Eye of Terror, they took with them all the uh, standard template designs for the different land raider variants. And the Loyalists, what they were stuck with was essentially um, corrupted files. And that's why Land Raiders were available to the Imperial Guard in 30k, but they're not available to the Imperial Guard in 40k, because they can't produce them anymore. And so whatever ones they've got, they give them to the Space Marines as a priority. In theory then, 40k Chaos should be making all these crazy different versions, but it's the exact polar opposite. All these different versions of the Land Raider, the Redeemer, the Crusader, um, Prometheus, the Helios, all these different versions of it somehow end up in loyalist um, space marine chapters. It makes no sense. So you get a lot of that. Yeah, the Iron Hands should have a ton of cataphracty armor. Mm, guess they just don't. At least you can play Dark Angels Deathwing and they have Terminator armor. Let's see. Gonzalo Vicente, uh, apologies if I pronounced that wrong. Hey Macker, if you had to do design new starter box, the likes of Betrayal, um, Kelth, Boom, Prospero, how would you make it? Um, I've said it before, I would do a re-release of Rogue Trader um, and release the Rogue Trader rules in it and it would have a whole bunch of Space Marine Beakies in it and probably a new Dreadnought, a redo of the Foreman, um, the Foreman not Foreman, Taurus, um, Farabundus Hatton Dreadnought. And maybe a plastic javelin land speeder in it. That way 30k players could use it and 40k players as well and people could just buy it in general. If I could really have my own way I would fill a box full of Breacher Space Marines and a decent plastic Contempt of Dreadnought. Um, or a maybe some plastic Castellax would be pretty cool. And maybe have a Imperial Fist versus Iron Warriors Battle of Fell. That could be fun. Just give me a minute, I need to have a drink. I'm very parched. Beer. Nectar of the Nitwit. Wizard 03, I'm playing Zone Mortalis games as Night Lords. I'm bringing two Terror Squads and I'm debating on equipping them with Volkites or Heavy Chain Swords since they have two attacks each. Thoughts? Well, both have their pros and cons. The Volkites, you're not going to get much of a chance to shoot them because the short range on them combined with the tight corridors means the enemy is going to attack you uh, and one of you is charging the other. 
So you're pretty much going to get one chance to shoot at the enemy, and maybe, if you're lucky, a full initiative overwatch. Heavy chainsaws, on the other hand, sync really well with your Legion special tactics, um, which is if you outnumber the enemy, then you get that massive buff. So eh, it's something to take into consideration. Raxus says, if I want to do Solar Auxilia, how is it almost the same price of 40k Tyranor Imperial Guard Army? How is nothing from Fortress in stock anymore? Um, look, if you want to do Solar Auxilia, the way I've done my army, I've got a single LAS rifle section. Um, I bought the army, shit, after book five, and it pretty much has sat in a box ever since then because I've been constantly working on Space Marines. Now I've pulled it out of the box in the last few weeks and I've started working on it. One LAS rifle section can be accompanied by up to two flamer sections because they can all come in the single infantry tercio. I then take a Valtara Storm section with power axes because it's good to have some close combat potential in the army, mix it up a bit. And in order to take those, I have a Ward Marshal, which is your uh, Solrox command squad here. You get a Ward Marshal and a tactical command squad. Then couple of Valtara Storm sections. I'm running two of them with Volkites, exactly as you see them, because that's what they're armed with. Uh, you can run them with Power Axes. I've got Charonite Ogrens for when I play Zone Mortalis, so I can go Charonite Ogrens, Laz Rifle Squad, and Flamer Unit, because the Flamers in Zone Mortalis are really, really good. And that's a basic Solar Ox army. If we want to go for transports, yeah, you could go the Aurox, but me, I went for Draco Sans. Um, I'm actually going for Drake Sons and Aurox. I think I've got three of each in my list at 3,000 points. And then, of course, you can load up another stuff. I mean, you could buy the Solar Auxilia Strike Force if you wanted, and that will get you a really decent list. But you'll probably find that you won't need the second Laz Rifle Squad very much because the Laz Rifle Squads are really cheap in points. They're like 120 points or something for 20 guys. So it will not stretch far for your money. Alright, are there any 30k groups in the Mid-Atlantic region? Uh, in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean? Probably not many. <laughs> uh, Misanthrop Man, do you think Orcs will get new models before the year's Christmas Battle Force appear? Okay, Space Marines got new sculpts and they appear in a Battle Force the same year after all. Maybe. Um, depends, I could see them getting a couple of characters. I don't see them getting a whole army. I don't even know if they'll get Orc Boys. Henry the Ninth, what do you think about Games Workshop Forge or Expand the Specialist Games? On one hand, the release rate is pathetically slow. On the other hand, the company is called Games Workshop after all. Well, you know, Games Workshop, for a company that only wants to sell games, has an awful lot of uh, not games. If I type in, let's see, Codex, let's see how many results I get. Uh, 94. Now, we know there's going to be an enhanced edition and an EPUB version in here. So, let's cut that by three. There's at least 30-odd codexes for 40k. So, for a company that's uh, selling games and doesn't care about rules, they sell an awful fucking lot of rules. Um, as specialist games, I'm all for um, specialist games. The problem is... How much do you flesh them out? I mean, Blood Bowl is getting a whole new game, as it were, the season two. Um, they've got plenty of teams, so I guess Blood Bowl's been pimped out. Problem with Spike is all the old Spike editions now no longer work, so if you shelled out for all those, um, go make sweet, sweet love to yourself in a corner, I guess because all those spike issues are now out of date and you might have spent a lot of money on them. But, you know, that's pretty fleshed out. Um, let's go look at one that's not very fleshed out. Let's look at Titanicus. So if we go to all Adeptus Titanicus, all of it, every single thing, we've got 38 results. So, what well, pretty much right here is most of the models minus the Reaver. Um, there's some Questorus Knight upgrade bits. There's some uh, decal sheets. Book after book after book. Defensive 
Bryzar, Titan, Death, Doom of Moloch. The actual models are thin on the ground. When it comes to Reavers, um, you can get Reavers with certain weapons, yes. Um, what have we got? Sarasa's Knight, Asheron, Castigator, Sarastus Knight. So there's three different types of Knight, two different types of Reavers. So that's five models, but the Reavers are the same model, just with more weapons options. Um, then we've got Pryphon, Acastus, Questorus Knight, Warhound, Warbringer, and Warlord. So that's 11 models, 11 different models in the entire Titanicus range. And that's being generous because a lot of these knights are double up to the same torso uh, with slightly different weapons loadouts. That's 11 models and Titanicus is what, two years? Two and a half years now it's been out for? So that's what, one release every two months on average? Not even? Not great, not great. Um, specialist games is a great concept if you flesh out the specialist game fully. I feel like you should flesh out a game, get it complete, and then lock it almost in stone and do the occasional FAQ and such for it, but it's it's left there, the models are there, people can come and buy into it at any point they like, and all the stuff is ready to go, and you haven't made everything they've ever bought redundant. But what they've just shown with Blood Bowl is that they're revisiting it already, even though there's a heap of specialist games that aren't completed, don't have all the models, or don't even exist yet, such as Battlefleet Gothic and Mordheim, which I think are two criminally lacking specialist games. Alright, moving on. Booting Legion Tactical Squad, Power Fist or Lightning Core on the Sergeant. It's my first 30k model as well. Hmm. Depends. Do you want to kill Power Armor, or do you want to kill everything? Power Fist is good for everything, but not a huge amount of attacks. No different to a single Lightning Core, though. If you're Raven Guard, you can take a Raven's Talon, so it'll be Master Craft and have Rending, which is really good. Mm. Or is your Legion a special Legion that has their own special war gear, like Empress Children taking a Phoenix Spear, um, World Eaters taking Cartery Weapons, that kind of thing? Hard to hard to uh, give you the answer, I'm afraid. FYI, Macca, the 40k Land Raider is just a different mark of Phobos Land Raider. Godhammer only refers to the last cannons. I know. I know. That's what I was talking about. I was talking about the loadout on the Land Raider, not the different Land Raider variants. Um, I was referring to... Pretty sure I said the uh, Redeemer, which is the one with the Flamestorm cannons the Crusader, which has the Bolt Guns, the Helios, uh, which is the Whirlwind Launcher on it, the Prometheus, which is the All Heavy Bolter Armament, etc, etc, etc. Marine Loyalists have a crap load of different Land Raider build types available to them. Chaos has the God Hammer, Twin Link Laz Cannon only Land Raider. When they could have had fun stuff like um, Hades Auto Cannons or um, Ectoplasma Cannons, any of that kind of cool stuff would have been great to see on them. I hope at some point they'll remake a starter box like they did for Prosper, made with Mark II armor. Uh, <laughs> that's dreaming. Um, I think it's just too hard for them because uh, Mark II armor is so complex with all the overlapping plates. It's very hard to cast in a die um, efficiently in plastic. Mark my words on that. Um, Mark III, you can get away with it a lot easier because there's these big flat pr uh, panels on the front parts of the armor, which you don't get on Mark II. Internet man, my shop is starting Zone Mortalis soon. I want in. Made a Night Lord list with Battle Scribe, Box Drain, Legion Terms, Praetor, three six man Terror Squads. Change one of them for a Breacher Squad. Thoughts? Um, three six man Terror Squads. Ooh, yeah, you'll have objective capturing, but do remember, you're going to start with a lot of stuff in reserves with that list. I would be looking at downgrading the Praetor to maybe a champion, because that's a perfectly acceptable HQ type. Saving a lot of points there, because a Praetor is huge in small game. Because um, you could take pretty much two champions for the price of a Praetor, which is just better. 
um, or a champion. A chaplain. Chaplain sings really well with terror squads. Hmm. Or, or cha <laughs> chaplain in Terminators is ooh, brutal. Um, breach squads though are really good because they're just so tanky. People don't get charge bonuses, so world eaters are just neutralized. It's really powerful. Um, yeah, it depends what you want out of your list, I'm afraid. Maka, are you still playing MESBG? Any chance of getting started videos on it? MESBG, I'm not sure. Oh, Middle Earth Strategy Battle Game. No, I'm not playing it because there's no one to play here with. Um, I do have a massive Numenor and massive Gondor force, but... Mm, no. Raxus, sorry Macro, I think I worded my other comment wrong. I meant that Tyranids and Imperial Guard are price hikes so high that it's almost the same as their ice as a solar ox army, i.e. Maliceptor being 90 Canadian dollars. Whew. Yeah, okay, that hurts. Ferris Omegon, Orcs are getting new models. I haven't seen them yet, so... The boot from Christmas Rumor Engine was never revealed, plus, hey, plus they teased the new model. Oh yeah, I... I definitely saw that they teased an orc model I was just thinking it's probably going to be some like HQ special character something like that just a minimum effort output like they've done previously Bill Dor, hey Maka just wondering if you're doing a video on mortable events it's taking over the Heresy C in the UK uh, as I said Tom is a good friend of mine um, he's a great guy uh, we get along really well uh, I have a lot of good things to say about Tom um, yeah, him and I, we are actually going to do an episode together in a few weeks' time. Um, I'm trying to tee it up at the moment. Um, I catch him at every event I go to, pretty much, interstate. And I use his rules all the time. I've even got copies of all the PDF rules at the moment, but I'm not visiting it yet because he's going to come on the show and talk about it with me. And I think it'll be a great chance um, if people want to throw me some questions to talk to him about, you can email me. Uh, the outer circle 30k at gmail.com and I will bring them up with him when we talk. What do I think of the Ultramarine Rite of War Vigil Operati mission? I'm considering running it. It's okay. Down the line though, in I believe two Rites of War videos, I'll be covering it. The only reason I have not done any more Rite of War videos currently is because I'm waiting on Book 9 to arrive because we're going to get the Rites of War for the Night Lords in that, which are the next uh, Legion up on the list. And so when we cover it, we'll be able to talk about their new Rite of War in combination with their new units. And that's really the big thing, because I don't know what the new units are, haven't covered it yet. Pardon me. <coughs> Love when the beer goes down the wrong way. <clears throat> Yo, out of circle, what do you think Angron's upcoming model will look like? Statue, size, start pose. <clears throat> um. Hmm. Tough one. Well, let's look at Mortarian and Magnus. That's pretty much your example right there. Something like Scarabrand, their size. <clears throat> you know what, guys? I'm going to cut the stream there because I seem to be losing my voice. And um, I might pick it up tomorrow. We'll see how we go for timing. So, sorry about that. But, obviously, I'm not talking as easily now as I was. <clears throat> oh, that's disappointing. I'll see if I can kick on. Um... Angron's upcoming model, yeah, I'd say look at Scarbrand's model, and that's probably a good basis to go off. Two-handed axe, big wings, dreadlocks, sort of a sunken skull-like face, bright red. Um, he'll be as big as Magnus or Mortarian, probably. I dare say, leaping over a pile of skulls and such on the ground, I don't know.
thinking of taking some corn knights and lord on juggernauts and converting them to useful my world eaters. Do you think that'd be okay, or should I be limiting myself like those people do? Um, Siege of Terror. Hmm, I'm thinking. What can you really represent with them? Outriders, jet bikes, something like that. I think it's probably a little bit too early in the heresy to go that far down the path, because it's not until the end of the Shadow Crusade where Angron himself turns to corn, and the rest of the Legion was pretty iffy on that. Um, even Khan's like, ooh, what the fuck's going on here after that? So I don't necessarily know that you should be uh, going that route. But, you know, rule of cool. Do what you like. Uh, new question. I'm staying a thousand cons... Ugh. A thousand suns, 30k army. Does the Corvidae allow me to reroll gets hot rolls on plasma cannons? No, it's reroll ones to hit. Uh, that's not a to hit roll, it's a gets hot roll. How's life in lockdown? Uh, waiting for the life eater virus to hit you. Well, Peter, um, we can talk all about that when I come on your show, on your podcast. Um, the life eater virus has not hit me, so we're good. Tougher things have tried. Hey, Mac, what's the best layout for a Zone Mortalis Contemptor? Uh, really good question, Warmaster Painting. Um, by the way, people, go check out Warmaster Painting's work. There's so much beautiful stuff there. The man paints better than me. Um, it's infuriating. <laughs> um, it really depends on Legion, because some Legions have better rules for their Dreadnoughts than others, and you can be a bit more risky with what you do. But I tend to find a chain fist, power fist with graviton hands, as in grab gun hands, really, really good. Because it's short ranged in Zone Mortalis, you don't really get the effects of things like conversion beamers, las cannons, that kind of thing. You're paying a lot of points for it. So that's the sort of thing I do with my Zone Mortalis Contemptors. Still reading through the comments. Is there much of a heresy scene in Melbourne area? I'm slightly tentative to travel in a state to get it. There's a big scene in um in Melbourne. Um Yeah. Uh, unfortunately right now there is no scene in Melbourne because there's no anything in Melbourne. <laughs> it's something warm to drink. Yeah. Um my beer is kind of working. Thanks, guys. Page 164 of the book says you can re-roll gets off weapons that do not roll to hit. So I'm confused. So am I. I'm pretty sure Corvidae rules is just re-roll ones on heavy weapons or rapid fire weapons if you haven't moved that turn. It's not twin linked, mastercraft, anything like that. Huh. <sighs> Well, that's the end of the chat roll, it seems. And I did say I should probably go because I seem to be losing my voice. Probably just because I had a bit of beer go down the wrong tube. Um, well, I, I'll try and get out another video tomorrow on something heresy related. But not sure yet. Really depends. Um, as for what I think the 40k red butchers will look like, are they getting 40k red butchers? Don't know. But the old corn uh, upgrades at Forge World for the World Eaters are really, really nice kits. So, hmm. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. I uh, hope you enjoyed the live stream. hope this is a little bit more um, professional <laughs> than the previous ones. And uh, see you all next time.